welcome to the course on VLSI physical design with timing analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about static timing analysis considering on chip variation and CRPR for mean path or hold check. So, the content of this uh, lecture includes uh, basically the launch flip flop and the capture flip flop and uh, we have three different cases, one is uh, without variation. So, here what we are doing is that uh, we are doing mean timing analysis or the hold uh, check for without variation that is the first case, then we will do mean timing analysis or the hold check with on chip variation or OCV. And the third category is basically how my timing analysis, the mean timing analysis or the whole check will change with OCB plus CRPR. So, we will discuss all the three type of timing analysis with one example. So, we will uh, first of all we will discuss how my uh, this uh, sequential circuit will look like for a uh, minimum timing analysis. So, static timing analysis. or minimum timing uh, minimum timing analysis this is also called to check for hold violation in any path so now first we'll discuss this how i can derive the equations for the whole path. So, this is my launch flip flop, this is my capture flip flop. So, this is launch flip flop 1, this is capture flip flop, this is flip flop 2. So, this is D, this is Q, this is D, this is Q. I have some combinational logic is there. So, since I am doing uh, minimum path timing analysis, I need to find the short path or mean path in the combinational logic in the combinational logic. Now, uh, in the previous uh, hold analysis, we consider the clock tree as a ideal clock tree, but here we are not considering the clock tree as a ideal clock tree, we have clock buffers introduced inside the clock tree. So, here you have a clock source is there, this is a clock source. Now, that is going through some buffer, why the buffers are needed? To make the input slew because the clock is uh, going to multiple flip flops. So, if the clock is going to multiple flip flops, it is driving a large amount of capacitance. So, in order to make the rise time same, we need some some buffers in the clock tree. Okay. Otherwise, your uh, clock uh, signal will be very bad if you do not have buffers in the path. So, this is the clock pin. Okay. So, I have uh, this is the common point. Okay. So, this is the common point. Now, he, this is the uh, basically sequential circuit I need to analy analyze for the mean timing. So, I have two points uh, to uh, think is there two definitions I need one is data arrival time. So, data arrival time for the whole check and the setup check will be different. So, here we are doing the data arrival time analysis for the whole check. So, for whole check okay. my data arrival time data arrival time D A T is basically launch clock path plus mean data path. 
okay, I need to consider the minimum path, this is very important point, I need to consider the minimum path in the combination circuit. Okay. I, if I have a uh, clock to Q delay is mentioned, I need to take the T clock to Q clock to Q minimum. Okay. Okay. So, this, uh, this basically the mean data path whatever it is written, it is basically T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum. I am using one term here for this. So, now I have data required time ok. So, data required time d r t is basically capture clock path capture clock path plus t hold. So, now for whole check what is my constraint for whole check these are the uh, arrival time for whole check your data arrival time should be greater than equals to because that path should take more time compared to data required time, data required time. This is very important. Your data arrival time should be greater than data required time to avoid whole violation. So, this is my, then the slag here, the slag here is basically your data arrival time minus data required time. Okay. So, there are two cases here. So, for uh, if I if I have slag is given there are two cases case 1, case 1 slag is positive. Okay. What will happen if your slag is positive? Basically, your uh, uh, data arrival time, okay, data arrival time is greater than data required time. Data arrival time is greater than data required time means that your data is arriving late compared to your clock age. Okay. Data arriving late compared to your clock, clock age, so slag is positive. So, there is no hold violation, implies no hold violation. This is very important, people has always confusion with the hold violation. So, slag is po positive means data is arriving late to the D pin, this pin there is no hold violation. But case 2, your slag is uh, negative implies that your data arrival time is small compared to data required time. Means, what is happening is that in the same clock is your old data whatever is there it is sampled by the new data which is not correct. So, you have hold violation. So, you have hold violation your uh, basically you are checking the hold violation in the same clock is. But whenever you are checking the uh, uh, setup violation, we are taking uh, you are using the two clock edge. Okay, so this uh, slag is negative means data arrival time is less than data required time. You you have a hold violation. So let's consider a special case. So the special case is that your there is no buffer in the clock path, no buffer in the clock path or clock tree. So, your launch clock path delay will be 0, and capture clock path delay will also be 0. Okay. Now, 
if that is the case your data arrival time should be greater than equals to data required time. So, data arrival time equation the launch clock path uh, this is this will be 0 then you will have mean data path only. And data uh, required time we have this uh, capture clock path is there. So, that will be 0 now we, we have T hold. So, this mean data path is nothing but your clock to queue delay minimum plus T combinational minimum greater than equals to T hold. So, we discussed this equation earlier. So, this is a special case equation because this is an ideal condition equation because there is no buffer in the clock tree. But in general whenever you implement a chip we have buffers in the clock tree we need to consider those buffer uh, and when we do the timing analysis. So, now we will take one example and explain how my uh, basically uh, timing analysis will happen with clock tree clock tree with buffers. So, I have a flip flop here. So, this is a launch flip flop, this is capture flip flop, then I have a mean delay path, this is the mean path I am considering because I am doing minimum timing analysis, this is clock, and this is clock, this is D, this is Q, this is D, this is Q. Now, I have buffers in the clock path because I am not I am considering the actual condition inside a chip and I am want to do the timing analysis considering the clock buffers. So, I am showing in this example one one buffer, but in reality that can be multiple buffers we need to consider all of them. So, this is your clock source and this is uh, the delay of this one is 0 0.4 nanosecond this is 0 0.6 nanosecond and this uh, delay uh, is basically the mean data path delay uh, whatever uh, we have considered here is basically 1.5 nanosecond. Then this uh, delay is basically 0 0.9 nanosecond ok. Now, your T hold is uh, basically 0 0.9 nanosecond. So, now I have three cases I will uh, check uh, how the things are happening ok. Case 1 uh, without uh, variation without variation. So, the launch clock path delay clock path delay is basically 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6 this is 1 nanosecond from here to here from here to here this is your launch clock path ok. Now, I have a mean data path mean data path is basically 1.5 nanosecond. Now, I have capture clock path the capture clock path is basically uh, is your 0 0.4 plus 0 0.9 which is basically uh, 1.3 nanosecond I, and your T hold is already given which is 0 0.9 nanosecond. Now, data arrival time is uh, found out to be your 1 nanosecond plus 1.5 nanosecond it comes out to be 2.5 nanosecond data required time is basically 1.3 nanosecond plus 0 0.9 nanosecond which is comes out to be 2.2 nanosecond. So, my uh, slag in this case slag is basically data arrival 
time minus data required time. Okay. So, this is 2.5 minus 2.2 basically 0 0.3 nanosecond. Your slag is uh, positive, conclusion is that slag is positive, hold requirement is met, is met. Now, there is no issue, there is no hold violation without uh, variation. Now, we have case 2, where we have with OCB on chip variation. Okay. With OCB, how my timing will change? If I consider the variation, local variation inside the chip, this uh, OCB stands for local variation inside the, inside the same die. same die or chip. So, let us say I have to set some derating factor, these derating factors are uh, taken from the foundry or doing uh, basically Monte Carlo simulation or some thing. So, uh, basically uh, set timing derate hyphen early, this is basically 0 0.85 and set timing derate. late okay so this is 1.1 okay now now set timing direct early 0 0.9 hyphen cell check okay now i have a launch clock path so this cell check is used for hold hold case because I am doing minimum part timing path. So, launch clock path delay, launch clock path is basically 1 nanosecond multiplied by 0 0.85. Why 0 0.85? Because I am considering uh, minimum path. Okay. So, this one should be uh, from here to here, from here to here is, is considered minimum or early, early in the derating factor is, is was early and from here, from here, from here to here it is uh, max or late, max or late which will create a worst case condition. My data is arriving early, my clock is uh, reaching late to mimic a worst case condition in uh, we need to consider the worst case uh, or delay. Now, so this uh, value is comes out to be the 0 0.85 nanosecond, then mean data path is 1.5 nanosecond multiplied by 0 0.85 okay, is 1.275 nanosecond then the capture clock clock path capture clock path delay should be 1.3 nanosecond multiplied by 1.1 because i have to take the max or uh, um, basically uh, late for the clock capture clock path so it comes out to be 1.43 nanosecond so this will be early this will be late. Now, data arrival time is basically 2.125 nanosecond and the data required time is found to be 2.24 nanosecond. Then the slag in this case is basically data arrival time minus data required time if I do the subtraction, it is comes minus 0 0.115 nanosecond. So, which implies the slag is negative, implies thus hold violation. Okay. So, uh, uh, the case 2 with OCB, we have hold violation. Now, we will consider case 3. 
So, the case 3 is basically with OCV plus CRPR. The CRPR is the already defined in the uh, setup uh, case. So, we are just finding the CPP, the CPP, the uh, common path pessimism factor, whatever it is there. So, this is 0 point, oh, which is the common path here? The common path is basically from here to here is a from here to here till this uh, middle point is your common path. So, the delay is 0 0.4 which is taken as mini mean or early when I am considering the launch clock path. So, this is considered mean, but in case of uh, capture clock path it was uh, taken as late. So, one buffer it is there in a single same chip, how can it can behave too differently if, if the same buffer is there inside the chip. So, this is a something mistake we did in the OCB calculation, we need to correct that using CPP. So, how much error we did in the OCB is uh, uh, basically we uh, calculate that value using CPP. So, 0 0.4 multiplied by 1.1 minus 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.85 which is comes out to be 0 0.1 nanosecond. Okay. So, earlier the slag is negative and the value was what is the slag value? Is This is the slag value previously there. So, this is the slag. So, this minus 0 0.115, 0 0.115 then the plus plus CPP. Okay. So, the plus CPP is basically it will uh, this will 0 0.1 nanosecond CPP is uh, uh, 0 0.1 nanosecond it comes out to be minus 0 0.015. So, it is reduced compared to the OCV, but still it is 15 picosecond uh, basically a negative uh, slag is there. So, hold uh, uh, violation is still there, but it is reduced compared to the analysis with uh, with OCB, so, hold violation is there. Hold violation exists, it can be solved using buffer insertion. Okay. It can be solved using buffer insertion and uh, even if it change uh, any time period, we cannot solve the uh, hold violation. So, your hold violation that uh, main important point is that hold violation or hold check uh, or hold constraint is independent of independent of the time period time period of the clock. Okay. Even if we change the time period your hold violation problem cannot be solved, okay. cannot be solved. So, this buffer whatever we will insert, it should be inserted in the this path, okay, data path. Okay. So, we need to do the buffer insertion in the uh, data path. Okay. And uh, so, there is one more important point here is that your slag uh, whatever we defined earlier, the slag is basically what is the slag definition? Your slag is basically in this case is uh, data arrival time minus data required time. Okay. So, this slag is the basic definition of the slag. Okay. So, the case 2 whenever I am doing uh, basically uh, case 2 whenever I am doing within OCV, let us say the slag is basically slag OCV is the data arrival time minus data required time. This is for case 2. The case 3 what is happening? We are doing OCV plus that uh, CRPR where the slag the modified slag actually we can say the slag for OCB plus CRPR is what is the case is your data arrival time 
minus data required time plus CPP. The CPP whatever the term okay, that is added with your data arrival time and that is added with the data arrival time to find out the actual slag in the path, okay, actual slag in the path. So, the, the new slag is data arrival time plus CPP minus BRT. So, because that path was taken mean data arrival time path was taken mean for the common path actually for this path okay, from here to here. So, that uh, uh, factor should be added in the data arrival time to make the actual calculation of the slag whenever you are doing the uh, OCB plus CRPR. Okay. So, the, the hold is very cru crucial thing and many of the designs if you do not calculate the buffer delay properly or interconnect delay properly, we have more chance of hold violation. We need to do the mean timing analysis very carefully because uh, if you have hold violation inside a chip, it cannot be modified after the manufacturing. But if you have a setup violation which can be solved by slowing down the clock uh, speed, but fold violation cannot be solved uh, basically um, without um, by changing the clock, clock uh, frequency. So, you, you should put more attention while uh, checking the hold in all the paths in the all the short path in the design, all the short path in the design. So, in this lecture we discussed about the minimum timing analysis. So, we consider three different cases, one is uh, without variation the case 1, the first case is without variation and the second case uh, is uh, how to do minimum timing analysis considering, considering the local variation the, or the on chip variation and uh, the third case is basically how to do timing minimum timing analysis considering the OCB or on chip variation plus the common path, uh, the common clock path which is uh, creating the error in our timing analysis that considering OCB plus CRPR we did the uh, timing analysis. We discussed three different timing analysis uh, for the whole check the or the minimum uh, path uh, minimum ana uh, timing analysis. So, this is very important for uh, doing the whole violation checks in the uh, short path. Thank you for your attention.